broadcasting? No. Hmm? No, it's uh, almost like, I mean, you said you just click on the black screen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Well, welcome to all. It feels like I, it's been a very long time since the last, uh, last time I celebrated Mass uh, with all of you here, and so I'm always grateful to be here. On Wednesday, I was not able to celebrate Mass because I was celebrating a funeral, um, and so it's uh, thinking of that family, thinking of Paulina Cuevas, um, and just also thinking of all the all the people who, uh, who are suffering during this time, um, especially I'm thinking of them today. We gather today, um, I'm just conscious of the gospel of this beautiful scene we have with Jesus and the man who can't hear, and then Jesus says to him, be open, ephatata, <laughs> how am I saying this correctly, ephatata, be opened, be opened. It's a basic command that all of us are hearing, uh, that we want to hear, uh, from Jesus himself. What gets in the way of us listening? What gets in the way of us hearing God's voice? It's a good question for all of us. What gets in the way? And so let's just acknowledge that sometimes, or more often than not, so much gets in the way of us hearing God's voice in our lives. And we turn to God with just a basic, basic need and basic desire. I want to hear you. Help me remove anything that gets in the way of hearing your voice, Lord. And so we acknowledge our sins in order to prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to heal us and bring us strength. 
Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Now the serpent was the most cunning of all the animals that the Lord God had made. The serpent asked the woman, Did God really tell you not to eat from any of the trees in the garden? The woman answered the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. It is only about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden that God said, You shall not eat it or even touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you certainly will not die. No, God knows well that the moment you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like gods who know what is good and what is evil. The woman saw that the tree was good for food, pleasing to the eyes and desirable for gaining wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. When they heard the sound of the Lord God moving about in the garden at the the breezy time of the day, the man and his wife hid themselves from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. Blessed is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes not guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. Then I acknowledge my sin to you, my guilt I cover not. I said I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. For this shall every faithful man pray to you in time of stress. Through, though deep waters overflow, they shall not reach him. Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. You are my shelter. From distress, you will preserve me. With glad cries of freedom, you will ring me round. Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Open our hearts, O Lord, to listen to the words of your Son. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him off by himself, away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears and spitting touched his tongue Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Ephaphatha, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened. His speech impediment was removed, and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished, and and they said, He has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It, uh, I definitely have a message that I wanted to share with you this morning, but for some reason I, I remembered in the middle of this Gospel, um, I used to have a speech impediment when I was a kid. 
I had horrible ear infections uh, for a very long time, which meant that I couldn't hear words being pronounced. And so I had, um, I had speech therapist all the way up until I was like seven or eight years old. Uh, so, and occasionally you can hear me, I get tongue tied or I get, I get caught up on something. Um, and I'm just thinking of how grateful I am for my mom and my parents, my dad and my family and how much energy they put into making sure that I could speak well. Um, and that's certainly uh, the work of God. I'm just thinking of how grateful I am for that. You know, listening is something that's very hard for us to do. And not in the way of that we don't listen. It's that in who we are listening to. Who are we listening to right now? So just think about who you are listening to right now. What are the credible sources or what you think are credible sources online or in the news or your friends? Who, who talks and you just say, you know what, I'm going to listen to them. And then conversely, who talks and you say, no way. <laughs> there's, nothing, there's nothing that they can say that is credible to me. Absolutely nothing. Listening is hard for us because we sometimes listen to the wrong people or the wrong sources. And so just think about Eve in the garden. Who is she listening to? She's listening to the serpent. And in some ways, I kind of understand. I understand why she's listening to the serpent because it puts it right here. The serpent was the most cunning of all the animals that the Lord God had made. So first of all, she trusts in the goodness of God because she's trusting, hey, God made this animal. Maybe I should trust this animal. But also, this animal's smart. Just think about how many people we listen to. As soon as they say something intelligent, even if we have this warning in our heart, we go, there's something good there because they're smart. They're really smart, and so I should trust what they say. How often have we, have we fallen for that? How often have we fallen for that? I know I've fallen for that. Or if they talk like us, or act like us, or look like us, they have something credible to say. Even if they're saying something that is completely contrary to the truth, even if they're saying something that is harmful, you know what? They got something good to say. Right? They might be stoking our ego. Our, our, our ego. Um, just think of the people that we listen to. What do we sometimes need to do? What is sometimes something that's necessary for us to do? What does Jesus do to heal this man who cannot listen? He literally cannot listen. He takes him away. He takes him away from everyone. Why does he do that? <laughs> Why does he do that? There might have been something about that crowd, about the people that were surrounding him, that was getting in the way of him being healed. Just think about this. And he often does this sometimes. Jesus will take someone away from the crowd or he'll silence the crowd because sometimes others get in the way of our healing. Other voices get in the way of us hearing God's voice. There's still goodness there in the crowd. There's still goodness in other people. I'm not saying that at all. But sometimes we get wrapped up in dynamics or wrapped up in circles where we're just trusting in something other than God's voice, and we just need to separate ourselves a little bit. That's really hard to do right now, but we can still find that small space, maybe that just that little corner where we can separate ourselves and just listen to God's voice. Turn off the TV, turn off social media, uh, and just, just you and God, the vulnerability of you and God, which is a very scary thing to do, and sometimes the only place that we can be healed where we can let God say to us, be opened, be opened. All the things that are closed in us, our hearts, our minds, be opened. The only way we're going to hear that is if we sometimes just block out the other voices, let the other voices go, put ourselves in a place where we can hear God's voice only.
so with a great desire to hear God's voice, to just recognize the sacredness of just us and God, we bring all of our prayers to our loving God. So let's pray for our world, a world that sometimes gets caught up in dynamics that are harmful to us, ones that don't help us love one another and love God. May we hear God's voice somehow, some way, in the midst of everything. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for our church. May our church, even during these times of pandemic, may it still help people find that space where they can listen to God. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Uh, we pray for our community, uh, the one that we have here at Blessed Sacrament, the one that we have online for all the needs of our people. Uh, may we continue to help one another hear God's voice and not be voices that get in the way of God's voice. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And I'd like to uh, offer this Mass uh, for, for Paulina Cuevas, but also for Zanida Valdez and Asunta Canzona, for the pose of their souls and the consolation of their families. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And I'd also like to pray for my friend Brad, who celebrates his birthday today. May God shower blessings upon him and all of the good work that he does and all the ways that he shows his family love. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. So God, we recognize goodness all around us, but... You are the author of goodness, and so we put all of our trust in your goodness above all else. Hear our prayers and help us to hear your voice. And we pray all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. But this is water and wine. They come to share in the divinity of Christ who humble himself to share in earth. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partakers, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Zeneda Valdez, Asunta Canzona, and Paulina Cuevas, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in the resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. So my friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer one another a sign of peace. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And may the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. And may the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. And let us call to mind that great desire to hear God's voice that great desire for Jesus to heal us of anything that gets in the way of hearing his voice, removing any obstacle between us and hearing his voice. Let's call to mind that great desire to be in communion with Jesus. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself entirely to you. Never allow me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Let them thank the Lord for his mercy his wonders for the children of men, for he satisfies the thirsty soul and the hungry he fills with good things. Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.